Hi, this is the co-op internship information presentation. I'm Sally Richards. I'm the senior co-op internship program manager in career services, and we're in the student union on the third floor. You can see the semester specific dates and tuition in the co-op intern information handout on Handshake. Next. What is a co-op or internship? It's an on-site practical work experience that's relevant to your major in an industry or business environment where you're working with and learning from professionals in the field. You're being mentored and supervised by them. What's the difference between the two? A co-op is a multiple semester work term, either consecutive semesters or rotating between work and school. Only some co companies offer co-ops. An internship is a one semester work term. The positions will normally be on site. And this semester, there are a few possibilities of remote positions. Next. The question is, what are the benefits of doing a co-op? Next. You can gain real world experience. It's industry experience. It's the practical use for the theory that you've been learning in your academics. So you get to use what you've learned. You can actually meet career competencies for these uh, co-ops or internships. You're acquiring skills and gaining understanding of how to stand out in the job market. You develop skills that the workplace demands. You can network and make contacts. You can meet all levels of employees. Maybe even ask for recommendation letters from your manager. You can explore positions within your field of interest. You can find out whether you like that or don't like it. You like the culture or you don't. You like the position or even the industry. You can increase your chances of making a higher salary, which is approximately $11,400 above for an entry level intern or co-op above the annual salary that you would have gotten had you not done an internship. You can save money on tuition because you're paying for one credit of tuition plus university fees. Next. These are the eligibility requirements to earn academic credit. Any student can apply but must meet the minimums to earn credit. Undergraduate students must have completed 30 college or university credit hours and a 2.5 CGPA. This does not include AP credit. Graduate students need to have completed nine credit hours and have a 3.0 CGPA. Transfer students complete 30 college or university credits and have at least 12 credits at Embry-Riddle. That's one full semester. International students must complete one academic year, that's a fall and a spring, before curricular practical training will be issued. All students need to be in good academic standing and be degree seeking. Next. How do you get started? Activate your Handshake account, log in through Ernie, complete the profile information, and to apply through Handshake, you must have a resume approved. You follow the co-op to-do list in Handshake resources. It's like a checklist. You review this co-op presentation again or the handout that's on Handshake resources. You meet virtually or in person with the program manager in career services for a mandatory advisement session and you sign a student agreement again if you're intending to earn credit for your work experience. If you don't do this, that means you are ineligible to register for co-op credit. The student agreement is located on Handshake resources under attachments. 
You can make an appointment on Handshake with your program manager, again, through Handshake resources. Next. You're required to have a mandatory advising session if you want to earn academic credit for your co-op or internship. You can review the co-op internship presentation handout or view this presentation again on the YouTube Career Services channel. Then schedule the mandatory advising session before you leave campus. We'll verify eligibility and your CGPA credit hours on transcript. We verify you understand the student agreement. We'll answer any of your questions and we can review your resume and cover letter if you request. Next. What is a student agreement? It's a commitment to follow the ethical and co-op process responsibilities and regulations. It clarifies the ethical issue of applying, interviewing, and accepting positions. A student agrees to adhere to the Embry-Riddle Honor Code, and three of the values listed there are maintaining integrity, honesty, and trust. You sign a student agreement, again, to participate in the co-op intern program and earn credit. You'll upload it to experience approval request once you start that workflow. Next. What is the application process like? There's two ways to apply for opportunities. The first is through Handshake. It's a single sign-on through Ernie. Handshake is our career management system that we use for all opportunities. There are two ways that you can see it. One is through a mobile app, and that's on both Apple and Android, and the other is through the single sign-on on Ernie. The second way to find opportunities is called self-created co-op or internships. You locate the position. The position, though, must be relevant to your major and must be approved by the co-op faculty co-op advisor for your major. You need to be proactive in identifying self-created positions. You need to do some research, or you can talk to your program manager who can guide you. The career readiness competency for this is navigating job options and pursuing job opportunities for career preparation. Next. Where do you find opportunities? Well, you can search in Handshake. Typically, there's over 2,000 positions listed. It's used by many schools and employers. You can apply via company websites. You can network with your connections. Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Talk to your faculty. Talk to your family's friends or your friends' families. Participate in professional organizations online or on campus events. Do research. Attend company information sessions whether it's on campus or online. Conferences or via virtual face-to-face. -face. Read prior final internship papers that you can find on Handshake resources, or you can utilize career services resources and services which you find online. Some of the recruiting sites could be CareerShift or LinkedIn or Innerstride, which is a recruiting site that has many positions available for international students. These all are found in Handshake. Next. What about application paperwork? Application documents must be submitted to individual positions posted on Handshake by the due dates listed. But if you apply for a self-created position, that can be any time before the end of the term. All required documents, including your resume, must be uploaded to Handshake and approved in order for you to submit your resume and application paperwork to handshake positions. Submit requested documents if they're asking for them, sometimes a driver's license or a pilot certificate or a medical certificate may be required. Don't wait until the deadline to apply. Next. Some companies may even ask for an application so if you have to fill out an application, be sure you answer honestly and accurately. Two things to watch for could be traffic violations or your GPA. Even traffic violations are important for you to put. Companies can find out if you have something like that if you don't put it down accurately. 
And your GPA, if you have a 2.98 GPA, that's actually your GPA. It is not a 3.0. With your GPA, you don't ever round up. It's exactly what you have figured it out to be. Next. After you apply, wait patiently. If selected for an interview, the process may be virtually via phone, Zoom, Skype, Teams at the company site, or maybe even on campus. If you're driving or you're in class, it's okay to return calls. Many of the interviews will be a month or two before the end of the current term. The career readiness competency you can meet is communication. You articulate ideas in applications, resumes, and interviews. Next. How do you increase your odds of getting a co-op or internship? Next. You treat all interactions with a potential employer seriously, such as virtual recruiting, conferences, career fairs. Apply to as many companies as you're interested in via handshake and self-created opportunities. Practice your interview skills and arrange for a mock interview. A mock interview is actually a practice interview. You can also watch career spots through handshake for interview preparation. Have a professional email address and outgoing voicemail message. Your name, if possible, no slang like Joe's Bar, but warn your roommates that you may have employees, employers contacting you. Print a copy of the position description when you apply so you can reference it before an interview. Be sure you're using keywords in your resume or application that you found in the position description. Next. But the reality is, unfortunately, an application doesn't guarantee a co-op or internship. All companies don't even notify students once they get their application. Companies make all the hiring decisions, so it's an equal playing field. Positions are subject to budget allowances, number of positions available, number of applicants pursuing the opening, and sometimes the advertised positions are not actually filled. Many companies who recruit from Embry-Riddle also recruit from other schools. It's a competitive process. All companies want the best students. So think about these. What makes you stand out? What qualities make you a good fit? Do you have special skills you can show an employer? Okay, now we're gonna show you a one minute video of some of our previous interns and where they did their internships. Next.
Okay, what do you do after you accept an offer and had your mandatory advising and signed a student agreement? Then you begin the workflow process. You wanna make sure that you're reading the co-op intern program to-do list and guidelines. That tells you everything you will need to do in order to get an approval. Student submits the request via handshake. And you go to Career Center, Experiences, and request an experience to complete that form. Student will be required to submit different documents. Again, your student agreement will have to be uploaded, an offer letter from the company, which you need to have your start and end dates included and the number of hours to be worked. You can also have a job description or job description verification form included if the offer letter doesn't include what I had just mentioned. You'll need your approver email addresses, your supervisor and company contact, your faculty co-op advisor and career services program manager. The listings for their emails are all on the attachments in Handshake resources. Okay, you will we'll have to sign a co-op internship contract to register your co-op internship with career services and records. We career services are the ones who will get you registered for this co-op. And that has to be done before the term of your experience begins in order to earn that credit. A contract identifies your credits and is a different form than the student agreement. These steps are all in the co-op to do checklist. Next. Okay, you can only earn open elective credit for a co-op or internship work term. You complete the internship requirements by the due date each term that you do a work experience. At the end of the term, there's a final report and a supervisor evaluation that's due to career services and your faculty co-op advisor, and there may be additional requirements that the department requires. You earn a pass or a fail grade. Sometimes a faculty advisor can assign an incomplete grade if there's a reason why you didn't finish it by the end of the term. A pass does not help you, but a fail does hurt you in your CGPA. You must work 15 weeks, 600 hours in the fall and the spring to be full-time, and 13 weeks, 520 hours in the summer semester to earn full credit. Next. Undergraduate students earn one open elective credit for every 100 of hours of work completed up to a max of 600, which is six credits. Graduate students earn one credit hour elective for every 200 hours of work completed. Again, that would be 15 weeks, 600 hours. That would be three credits fall and spring and 520 hours, 13 weeks. And that would be three credits in the summertime. Next. If you're interested in using your co-op or internship for PDR or technical elective in ME or in AE, read these requirements carefully about getting technical elective credit. There are specific prerequisites that have to be fulfilled before a co-op or internship can be done. Next. You may be able to take academic class classes along with your co-op or internship. An undergraduate student registered for full-time academics may take a co-op or internship up to three credits. An undergraduate student registered for full-time co-op or internship may take two online or Daytona Beach academic classes simultaneously. International students may only take one and must be authorized by ISSS. You register through the Daytona Beach campus and your tuition is at the Daytona Beach rate. Graduate students and international students registered for full-time internship may only take one academic class simultaneously. Be sure you can accomplish both the academics and the co-op or internship. Next. What are some additional policies? A co-op or internship must be completed before graduation. You can possibly delay graduation to participate in a co-op or internship once your academic courses are done. 
but that does not mean international students can do that. And that's because of immigration regulations. There's no backdating of co-op internship credit. That means if you've come back from a co-op or internship and you didn't register, you cannot do it at that time. Although if the semester's already started and you realize you could earn academic credit and contact us, depending on how many weeks or hours are left of your scheduled work term, we may be able to register you for a decreased number of credits. Next. What is the cost of a co-op or internship? You do pay tuition at the cost of one credit and the university fees. Tuition is the same for the entire academic year, and that starts in the fall, the following spring and summer. There's an additional fee for international students, and you may receive up to six credits for undergrad and three credits for grad students, but remember you're only paying for one credit plus the fees. You can see the student financial services page so you can figure out what your fees will be. Next. Additional costs to consider could be for housing. It's your responsibility unless the company provides it. And there are some companies that actually do offer housing. So housing resources you can find from past interns, company references, company employees, or online resources like Airbnb. Talk to your program manager because they can guide you. Other costs could be for travel and transportation costs to and from your co-op or internship, and some incidentals like food, especially if you like Taco Bell or McDonald's. Next. We know Embry-Riddle students can be resourceful. We don't want you scrambling for a roof over your head. So career services can assist you if you're having a problem finding housing. Next. What are some other considerations? Well, financial aid for one, because your budget will definitely be decreased since you're only paying for one credit plus fees. Scholarships also. You have to be at least part-time to get financial aid. There's veterans aid to consider, Embry-Riddle housing because you have a contract. Participation in online classes must be approved by the dean of your college and you can't have financial holds on your account in order to register. That also means athletic holds or registration holds. You cannot be dual enrolled at another institution if you're registered for credit for a co-op or internship. Another consideration could be insurance. That could be for auto or health. And that could be also if you're on your parents' insurances. You can get a verification of enrollment that you would be considered a full-time student if you're doing a full-time co-op or internship. That would be from records. Next. International students, please read this information and the process carefully as there are a number of additional requirements you must fulfill in order to be able to get your curricular practical training authorization. You'll work with ISSS and career services in order to maintain that status. Next. You're expected to maintain ethical and professional standards at all times. What's a simple definition of ethics? It's knowing what's right and wrong and doing what's right. Why does this matter? We want companies to have a good impression of Embry-Riddle students. A company's impression of the Riddle students and the entire university community is based on the impression you leave. Any negative issues could jeopardize the university's relationship and your own relationship with the company and with the industry. You want to leave a good impression for you and for the university. You're going to conduct yourself professionally. We want you to have a good experience and other students to have future opportunities. There's an impact on the company when you're there. Next. We expect you to be professional and maintain good moral conduct. Companies do some investigating when they're doing recruiting 
So clean up your social media and your privacy settings. We understand that 80 to 90% of HR recruiters do search social media online. So be sure your digital footprint reflects a professional image of who you are. Next. What are your ethical responsibilities? Be truthful in all your statements and your documents and applications. Again, I go back to the traffic violations and your CGPA. You may not interview or accept a position with another company if you've already accepted a position, even verbal or written acceptance for that term. If you accept a co-op or internship, you cannot back out. That's called renege. That means you're leaving a company without an intern and we won't write a second contract for you for your second choice of a commitment that term. You will not be able to register for any internship for credit that term, so we do remember that. Good ethical conduct requires that you fulfill your commitments, including completion of all rotations you've agreed to with the company if you're doing a co-op. Aviation is a relatively small industry. This could leave a bad impression on you as the student and on the university. Next. Lying on your resume will definitely be a reason for dismissal, whether you intend it or not. Be honest, companies do find out. Next. How do you show professionalism? Be prepared at all times. Any interactions with potential employers via company information sessions, phone calls, and emails affect your co-op internship search. Don't use slang or abbreviations or emojis. Be courteous and polite. Ensure you follow all etiquette rules. Have an appropriate outgoing mail, voicemail, answer phone calls professionally. Professionalism is expected at all times. Show employers you can make the transition from student to professional. The career readiness competency you can meet with this is professionalism. You exhibit effective work habits, punctuality, productivity, personal accountability, time management, integrity, and ethical behavior. Next. Make this your motto. I always follow the rules. Next. You can meet a number of these competencies, career competencies, by doing a co-op or internship while you're preparing and during the internship. Next. Stay connected to career services. Connect, follow, join, and like career services via all our communication methods that are listed below. There's program managers for each degree program in career services. Check out our career services website or on Handshake under the co-op intern program and search for your program manager. I want to wish you good luck as you search for opportunities and you're selected for co-ops and internships and get that experience that's so valuable. Next. Thank you for attending.